Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh viewers Welcome to Question Time on Islam once again uh, Your host Naveed Hussain Our Islamic scholar Sayyid Muhammad Musawi joins us again uh, For you the viewers if you have any questions, any comments uh, About not just the religion of Islam but life in general Please take this, do take this opportunity to call in or text in with your Comments or your questions. Sayyidina, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah bless you and all our brothers and sisters. This great month of Rajab is a great chance for everyone who is alive. No one has guaranteed that he will remain alive till next month of Rajab. And the month of Rajab is called by the Prophet himself, peace be upon him and his holy progeny, Shahrullah al Akbar, the great month of Allah. While the month of Sha'ban is the month of the Prophet himself, and the month of Ramadan is the month of the Muslim Ummah. So the month of Rajab is the great month of Allah. It is one of the four. Shahrul Haram. In every year we have got four Haram months, holy months, sacred months, during which war is not allowed to be initiated. Only if someone attacks you, you then have to defend yourself and your family and your country. But you cannot initiate any war, you cannot attack in the month of Rajab and three other months which are Dhul Qa'da, Dhul Hajjah and Muharram. So the four months who, which are called Al Ashhur Al Hurum, one is single which is Rajab and three are together Dhul Qa'da, then Dhul Hajjah, then Muharram. The month of Rajab is called Shahrul Istighfar Li Ummati, the month of forgiveness for the Muslim Ummah. Month of Rajab is a great chance to seek forgiveness. You know, after the last month of Ramadan, which was, as usual, a month of worshipping Allah and purification, then from month of Shawwal till now, the spirituality of many people goes down. So month of Shawwal, then the Qada, then the Hajjah, then Muharram, Safar, Rabi al Awwar, Rabi al Thani, Jumad al Ula, Jumad al Thaniya. Now month of Rajab revives our spirituality again. And it is the month that we seek forgiveness and purification. That's why you find a lot of emphasis from the Prophet and his holy progeny, Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon him and them, on the month of Rajab. And always we have been told to seek forgiveness every day, to repeat 70 times. Astaghfirullah wa as'aluhu at-tawbah or any istighfar, any astaghfirullah in any way repeat it 70 times month of Rajab is a month in which it is highly recommended to repeat saying la ilaha illallah the month in which it is highly recommended to repeat saying la ilaha illallah and repeat saying qul huwa allah ahad the whole surah of qul huwa allah ahad qul huwa allah ahad to be repeated the month of rajab is month in which highly recommended to fast if you fast one day in rajab you will get great reward two days more three days more ten days as much as you can of course, recommended fasting is only for those who don't have any qaza fast on them. 
if anyone has got any qaza, qaza fast on him or her, he is not allowed to fast, but only qaza, not recommended. First, the <coughs> qaza fast must be fulfilled, then the recommended can be observed. So, month of fasting. Those who have got qaza, let them make their qaza fast in this month of Rajab. The month in which there are many great dua supplications narrated from the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt in this month of Rajab. So, remind everyone in your family, friends, circle, not to underestimate the greatness of this month of Rajab and not to miss the great bounties and mercies and forgiveness in this month of Rajab. Thank you very much indeed, Sayyidina. Sayyidina, a question regarding the benefit mm -hmm. of the ghaibah of the 12th Imam. Now, many can argue that those present during the lives of the 11 Imams and the Prophet, peace be upon him himself, if they had problems, any issues, they could go directly or, or more or less indirectly to the Imams or the Prophet and get the answer, solution to a problem. In this day and age, we don't have access to the 12th Imam in that sense and so therefore you know are, are we behind with something is it unfair for the shias of this time or and how do we benefit from the uh, ghaibah of the 12th imam who said that we have no access to the imam who said that we have got full access to the teachings of the imam by following the marja's of taqlid maraja of taqlid <coughs> because the imam himself when he went into occultation, he advised the Ummah <coughs> that during his occultation, the major one, the long one, people should refer to the highest in knowledge and in piety, who are the marja's of taqlid. The marja of taqlid is the highest in knowledge with taqwa. So, no one can claim that I have no access to the teachings of the Imam. Imam Al-Mahdi is in occultation because Allah wants to save him from the evil of the tyrant who will definitely try to kill him if he is in public life. <coughs> and Allah will permit the reappearance of the Imam in the public life when the situation of the world will be suitable for establishing the worldwide, the pan society of peace and justice. Not only Imam al-Mahdi is in occultation, even Jesus, Isa, alayhi salam, but Jesus, who is in the sky, who is alive, Jesus did not die. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ They never killed him, nor crucified him, but they did with someone who was similar to him. The man who informed against Jesus mm -hmm. was one of his companions. Allah saved Jesus and made that man look like Jesus from outside. They came and captured him. They killed him and crucified him. The enemies of Jesus. So Jesus is alive. Allah says, رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ Allah raised Jesus to the sky. Jesus is in the sky. What is the benefit of Jesus to his people, those who claim to follow him? The real followers of Jesus 
are those who follow his teachings. And Jesus clearly said that, Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, Inni Rasulullahi ilaykum. I'm the messenger of Allah to you. Musaddiqan lima bayna yadayya min al-Tawrat. Confirming what is in my hand from the Torah, Old Testament. وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ مِنْ بَعْدِي And I'm giving the good news, glad tidings of a messenger who will come after me, اسمه أحمد. His name is Ahmed. So those who follow Isa, in fact, those who believe in the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his holy progeny, we are the real followers of Isa. And now, if you want to obey Isa, obey the Prophet Muhammad. If you want to obey the Prophet Muhammad, obey his holy progeny, Ahlul Bayt. Because he himself said, I am leaving behind you, O Muslims, two most important things. The book of Allah and my progeny, Ahlul Bayt. You will never go astray as far as you keep following both of them. Allah has informed me that Quran and my progeny will never go apart one from another till the day of judgment. So, following Isa needs you following the Prophet Muhammad. Following the Prophet Muhammad needs you follow his holy progeny, Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. And the Imam himself, Imam al-Mahdi, was being asked, and he replied, said that the benefit from me during my occultation, غيبت, is like the benefit of people from the sun when the cloud covers the sun. When you cannot see the sun itself because of the cloud, still the light of the sun is everywhere. Daytime. Cloudy day, light is there, though you don't see the sun. Exactly the same as when the Imam Al-Mahdi is in occultation, his guidance, his light is enlightening the whole universe. Yes, please. Thank you very much indeed. <coughs> so no, from that, what you just said, is it imperative on us to spend more time to know about our 12 Imams? Okay, we can know about the 11 Imams, but is it more important that we spend our life dedicated in the research of knowing about the existing Imam? All our Imams are from same Nur light, but the Imam of our time is Imam Al-Mahdi. And we are supposed to be more attached to him because he is the living Imam. He is our time's Imam. We have to focus more and more on knowing him, obeying him, and being closer and closer to him as sincere and obedient servants more we be obedient servants, servants to our Imam al-Mahdi more we are obedient servants to Allah. Because all the orders of Imam al-Mahdi are exactly the orders of Allah. Imam al-Mahdi wanted us to obey Allah. As he is the most humble servant of Allah in our time. And he wants all his followers to be followers and servants of Allah the Glorious. Thank you very much indeed. Question, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, should we read uh, La ilaha illallah who is exactly a thousand, uh, 10,000 times like you mentioned? Or can I read more than 10,000 uh, times? More you read, more reward you'll get. 
more you recite La ilaha illallah, more reward you get. We have got a hadith that a person who says every day, hundred times, La ilaha illallah, will get the maximum reward of that day among all people, except those who said La ilaha illallah more than him. So, saying hundred times La ilaha illallah, which won't take from you more than maybe two minutes, if not less, will make you gain reward more than anyone else except those who said La ilaha illallah more than you. So more you say La ilaha illallah, more reward you will get. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, part of the uh, qu same question um, f um, we have, is there, uh, tell us a simple way of doing istikhara at home for small things and is that okay to do? Istikhara have many ways. The simplest is the istikhara with the rosary, tasbih. Take the tasbih in your hand, say three times, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Then three times, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Then take, there's a short dua which might be, anyway, it is, Allahumma inni astakhiruk khiratan fi afiyah. If you can memorize it, otherwise just after three times Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and three times Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad, you seek from Allah to guide you, then hold any number of the bits of the rosary and take two, then two, then two, then two. If nothing remains, then istikhara is bad. If one remains, istikhara is good. Yes, please. Thank you very much indeed. Sayyidina, what is uh, the Salah of Salaman Farsi? Mm. And uh, you know, what, what is the procedure of Salah of Salaman Farsi and its reward? And this is narrated in the month of Rajab. Mm -hmm. It is narrated in the month of Rajab and the details of it is in Mafatihul Jinan. Go to Mafatihul mm -hmm. Jinan, which is available online in English, in Arabic, in Urdu, and you'll find the details of it. Yes, thank you very much. Indeed, Assalamu alaikum. I want to perform Hajj for my mother. Do on I behalf have of you, on mother, behalf of the mother is alive or dead? It, that doesn't say. It says I want to perform Hajj for my mother. Do I have to pray Namaz twice during Hajj? First of all. You cannot perform Hajj on behalf of anyone else if your own Hajj is not yet performed. If you have already performed your own obligatory Hajj, then you will be allowed to perform Hajj on behalf of someone else. This is number one. Number two, if your mother is alive and able to go for Hajj, you are not allowed to perform Hajj on her behalf if she is alive, unless she is completely unable to move or unable to be carried, then you can perform Hajj on her behalf or if God forbid, if mother is late. When you go to perform Hajj on behalf of your mother, your father, Anyone else, you perform salah, just one salah, not, not twice. You are performing hajj on somebody else's behalf. But your salah does not have any link with your hajj, which is on behalf of someone else. So you perform your salah just one time, not twice. Yes, please. Thank you very much indeed. Next question is uh, regarding Ism Azam. What is this and uh, what benefits are there to, to is there any amal, amal to recite Ism Azam? Uh, very important issue. The 
اسم أعظم الاسم الأعظم the greatest name of Allah no one from us can reach to the greatest name of Allah no one from us from the merge of taqlid till anyone else the greatest name of Allah is with Allah and with whom whom Allah has permitted Allah permits his most sincere servant like the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his holy progeny like his progeny Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam no one else can know the real Isma Azam but we have been taught many things to recite to be very close to the Isma Azam main thing is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim the hadith says that Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is so close to the Isma Azam like the closeness of the white and black in the eye the whiteness and the blackness in the eye to be near to Isma Azam keep on repeating Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim with concentration with dedication that is very great to recite repeatedly Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Thank you very much indeed After wudu I touched a cat After wudu you touched, touched a cat, cat. Yeah. Can I pray or do I need to perform wudu again? After wudu Someone has touched a cat. Can, after touching the cat, pray? Can they pray namaz? Or they need to perform wudu again? The answer is this. Cat is not najis. Cat is not najis. We have only among thousands and thousands of animals that Allah has created, only two animals are najis. Only two. Dog and pig. Only. Dog and pig. So cat is not najis. If you touch the cat, your wudu is valid. As far as the cat does not, did not have on it any najis item, like blood or any just item. So touching the cat does not harm at all. You can pray salah without any doubt. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Alaykum I have been invited by a Christian friend mm -hmm. for memorial of the Prophet Jesus. According to them, he was crucified on the 11th of April. Mm -hmm. They claim Jesus was crucified. Can I attend to go uh, to the church? No. Muslim is not allowed to attend any non-Muslim religious gathering. We respect the Christians. We respect the Jews. We respect every human being. And we respect their freedom to worship whatever they believe in. But we as Muslims, we are not allowed to take part in a worship that we don't believe in. <coughs> we are not hypocrites. We believe that Jesus was never crucified. So what is the meaning of attending an event of remembering the crucifixion of Jesus when we believe that he was never crucified? So in short, Muslim must keep harmony, mutual respect, and peaceful coexistence with every human being. Because we believe that every human being is either our brother or sister in faith, if they believe as we believe, or they are similar to us 
in humanity. Partners in humanity. But we don't take part in any religious function which is away from the faith of Islam. In fact, you do, don't need you don't need to take part in any non-Muslim religious function. Because people know that you are not like them. Your faith is different. So what is the meaning of joining a religious function which you don't believe in? No. With all the respect to non-Muslims, with all the peaceful coexistence, and mutual respect and harmony and cooperation in common cause, but religious practice is only according to everyone's faith. Allah in the Quran says, Lakum deenukum wal yadeen. For you is your faith, and for me is my faith. Oh, thank you very much indeed. So the, is it, we know that it is rec highly recommended mm. uh, to pray on time, of course. However, if you know during that period you will be very tired, you know you won't have the full concentration, mm. uh, is it better to delay it and be more alert because you've delayed it to be a more alert, you're going to have more concentration? Or do you still read on time? When you know for a fact it's going to be tired, sluggish, etc. Pray on time. Pray on time. Don't delay your salah for any reason except something which cannot be avoided. If something cannot be avoided, like someone who is in the emergency of the hospital. But if you are able always perform your salah on time without any delay. One of the most beloved acts to Allah is praying salah on time and doing good to your parents and making people happy by helping them in a proper way. Yes, please. Thank you very much indeed. So how did the Prophet, peace be upon him, earn his livelihood? And his he, peace be upon him and, and his, his holy, holy progeny. progeny. Um, how did he earn his livelihood? You know, did he work? Did he like, earn a, a regular income? And uh, how? Yes, the Prophet had earned, the Prophet, peace be upon him and his holy progeny, he earned himself his income. And Allah has kept for him Certain income, which we call it Al-Anfal. Anfal are the earnings of the Prophet which came without war, without battle. It goes to the Prophet. And he is entitled, authorized to do whatever he wants mm -hmm. for that. But he did earn personally plus the income which Allah has kept for him from Anfal. And uh, say that we find that the Imams also obviously went out and earned a livelihood. Of for course, example, of the first Imam, Ali alayhi salam, he used to work in the field of a Jew, yeah. uh, digging wells, yeah. etc, etc. Yeah. Now, yeah. A lot of the Imams spent in farming, um, uh, agriculture, etc. Mm -hmm. Were there any, I mean, knowing that the Imams had the knowledge and of course spreading the knowledge of Islam, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, weren't the Imams, you know, you know, involved in the livelihood in terms of doing other jobs other than just teaching and agriculture at that time? Yes. Our Imams, alayhum salam, beside their main, main role in teaching and leading Islam and Muslims, they did work. 
they did work not only Imam Ali alayhi salam but also other Imams we have got a narration that Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq when his, he was in an old age you know Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq was the eldest of the infallible Imams in his age in his old age someone came and saw him walking in a farm and sweating from the tiredness and told him a person with <coughs> your status is working and he replied to him yes why not why not working to earn halal livelihood so our imams did earn their livelihood through working as well thank you very much indeed uh, will you give information about the relieved and distressed sorry state? sorry let me add please imam zainul abidin when he came back from karbala karbala then sham then karbala then medina imam zainul abidin used to do business business of fruits he used to import fruits and sell in Medina and we have got in the narration when the news came that Al-Mukhtar killed the killers of Imam Hussein alayhi salam Imam Zayn al-Abidin alayhi salam distributed the fruits that he imported among the poor people in Medina celebrating the end of the enemies of Ahlul Bayt which means that our Imams السلام, used to earn their livelihood from different commercial or agricultural activities yes thank you very much indeed do we have a caller with us assalamu alaikum alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh assalamu alaikum I would like to ask again in Urdu. I don't think, um, I think the caller may have dropped. Um, Sayna, moving on to the next question. What is the reason okay, behind the shortage of life? For example, back in those days, we had people living over a thousand years, 950 years, etc., etc. But now, we find that that life has shortened down to 50, 60, 70. What is the reason behind this? Many reasons can be for the life to be as life now. Even the Prophet himself, the best human being, his life was just six, 63. Mm -hmm. And Imam Amir al muni alayhi salam also was 63. And all other Imams were... We don't have any Imam who reached to 70. Mm -hmm. The eldest Imam was Imam Jafar al-Sadiq who reached to 68 mm -hmm. that's it so the reason why the life uh, span has gone down from the very very old time of Noah you know Noah lived among his own people 950 years and then after that he lived according to the narrations he lived total 2,500 years. But now, not only now, I can say before, say, centuries, maybe 20, 30 centuries till mm -hmm. now, the life is shorter, maybe because of reasons of climate, or the human body abilities to live in this life longer and life 
does not remain meaningful mm -hmm. when there is no health. Mm -hmm. And the old age usually is linked with many illnesses. And it is one of the mercies of Allah that Allah does not leave people live very long. Mm -hmm. If people live very long, like 200 or 300 or 500, life will be very difficult. Very difficult. It is a mercy from Allah that we live here for a while. It can be, anyway, it can be 40, 50, 60, 70, but you don't find anyone who is 200 years old no. Recently, a person passed away in Japan, a lady mm -hmm. in Japan. Her age was 106, 106. So they have written that among all the human beings living on this planet, every 2 billion, every 2 billion human beings, one can reach to 106. That is mercy from Allah. Allah's mercy, not only on the person who is living this life, but also on the people who are living now. If the society is full of aged people, it will be difficult to run means you have to look after not your grandfather. Your, if it is a matter of 300 years, you need to look after seven generations who are all old and very old. Mm -hmm. So life will not be practical. Allah's mercy, Allah's wisdom, that life is in this limit. And then everyone lives here, does whatever he wants to do good, inshallah good, or bad, God forbid, and then everyone go goes from this life to the next stage because we don't believe that life ends. Life does not end. There's no end for life. Worldly life is terminated to transfer to the next stage. No end to the life. No one has finished. No one. Good people or bad people. Mm -hmm. It is only a matter of transfer from stage to stage. Thank you very much indeed, Sayyidina, for that lovely answer. We have a call of us. Thank you for waiting. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nabi Bajar. Ijaz Hussain Karbala. Yes, Karam. Can I ask? Um, we can't hear you. Can I ask the control team to. Um, to just sort out the volume. Um, can you try again, please? Yeah, as assalamu alaikum. You alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I would like to ask my question in Urdu again. Please. And, uh, this is Mahir Rajab going. And uh, my question is this from Surah Bani Israel. I have a fee hadaya number one. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Subhan Ladi Asra Biamtihi Lalum min al Masjidil Haram, Il al Masjidil Aksa, Al Ladi Warakna Haulahu Lin Riyahu Min Ayatina. So Mira Sara is me swal kimla sa yeah, Yalla Kara Kiva Wu Pak Zada Jopne Bande Kurato Rad, Masjid al Haram se Masjid Aksa Taklegi. और अप, उसको अपनी बरकत और अपनी निशानियां दिखाए तो सवाल मेरा यह है कि मुसलमान कहते हैं कि पैगंबर को खाब में मिराज हुई थी और अल्लाह ताला कह रहा है कि अपने बंदे को ले गई और बंदे को ले गई और वो वो बंदे पाक पैगंबर खुदा सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम पर रोशनी डाली है और कौन सी निशानियां थी जो अल्लाह ने अपने पैगंबर को दिखाई इस पर रोशनी डालकर हमारी तौफीक आदमी अजाब फरमाए अल्लाहु मुस्तफा अला मोहम्मद व अल मोहम्मद थैंक यू वेरी मच इंडीड Allah, the Glorious, has taken the Prophet Muhammad, his most beloved 
servant. As you read in Surah Al-Isra, Bani Israel. Subhan al-Ladhi Asra Bi'abdihi laylan He didn't say that Allah has taken the name of Muhammad. No. His prophet, no. His messenger, no. Bi'abdihi, his servant. His servant. Laylan, night time. من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله From the Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca to Masjid Al-Aqsa in Quds which is blessed the area is blessed because area of prophets لنريه من آياتنا to show him from our signs Allah has shown the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his holy progeny. In the Isra and Mi'raj, because from Baytul Maqdis, he was taken to the sky. Mi'raj. Allah showed him the prophets, the signs. The paradise, the hell, showed him. That's why Allah tells the Prophet, وَاسْأَلْ مَنْ أَرْسَلْنَا قَبْلَكَ مِنْ رَسُولِنَا Ask those who have been sent before you. Means ask the prophets and messengers who have been sent before you. How can the Prophet ask them? Where can he meet them? All of them passed away when he was alive. Allah made all of them meet the Prophet. And the Prophet performed Salah. And all the previous Prophets, all of them prayed behind him. He was Imam Al-Anbiya. The Imam of all the prophets. So Allah showed the prophet signs and signs and greatness. Greatness. When the prophet himself said that when I was raised and I was shown the gate of Jannat, I saw written on the gate of Jannat, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, Aliyun Akhu Rasulullah. Allah's name, Muhammad's name, the name of Ali. And this is in Sunni books as well as Shia books. Allah showed the Prophet a lot of ayat, signs in the Isra and Mi'raj. Yes, please. Thank you very much indeed. Assalamu alaikum. In Salafi books of fiqh, it, it mentions that zakat and sadaqah must not be given to the descendants of the Prophet, peace be upon him and his holy progeny, but they don't it mention what to give to poor descendants of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Can you tell, uh, can you please tell me what Sunni people give? Better to ask a Sunni scholar because the Salafi people also have in their books that Inna Allah harram as sadaqat ala Ali Muhammad. Allah made the zakat, means obligatory zakat, haram, forbidden, on the descendant of the Prophet, peace be upon him and his holy progeny. So, what the poor descendants get instead of zakat and sadaqah. There is nothing but khums. You ask them. Ask them. In fact, Sunnis have khums. They tried, I mean, their leaders in the past, Bani Umayya and Bani Abbas tried to deprive Ahlul Bayt from their right in Khums 
Still, in Sunni books, they have got khums in many items. Like any thing which is taken from the earth, which it is called kans or ma'adin. Khums is obligatory on it, according to Sunnis as well, not only Shias. But khums is not practiced among Sunnis. Because the leaders of the governments who were against Ahlul Bayt wanted to deprive Ahlul Bayt from all their rights. Now, where the poor Sadat go among Sunnis, better to ask a Sunni scholar. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Assalamu alaikum. Alaykum Can you please explain what uh, about men wearing round earrings, which I have been told that it's our Prophet, peace be upon him, and his progeny's sunnah. Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein salam, wore them when they were small. Is this true? I've, I've only seen Shia groups belonging to Pakistan and, or India. You know, the earrings for children, not for elderly. Mm -hmm. For children, young children, newly born, not elders. The newly born, yes, we have got narrations. But when they are elders, no. Anything which makes the male look like female is no, not mm -hmm. accepted. And anything which makes female looks like male is also not good at all. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much indeed. Assalamu alaikum. I have done my wajib hajj, but I would like to go uh, again. Can I do hajj again for myself and which niya I should do? Yes, you can do hajj again for yourself. Niya will be just qurbatan ilallah ta'ala. Not wajib because your wajib hajj has been already performed. So next hajj or any other hajj after the wajib, mustahab, recommended. Better or more thawab to do that next hajj, which is not wajib, on behalf of the Prophet, Ahlul Bayt, and your family members. Better. You'll get more reward. You'll not get less. You'll get much, much more reward. But if you want to do it just for you, you can, with the niyat of qurbatan ilallahi ta'ala. Thank you very much indeed. Sayyidina, you know, we realize that the Quran al Karim it has many different meanings, and of course, we cannot get, go to the depths or understand the depths of the Quran itself. Is it, will it be a, a, a correct statement to make that normal human beings will never be able to understand the Quran to, in its true essence, or any living thing in this universe? For that matter, the Quran itself, as you said, it's got seven inner meanings and etc. etc. We won't be able to understand the Quran as it is. You see, Quran was sent to guide people, to guide all the universe, all the human beings. Quran is the guide lines. The word of Allah, the nur, the hidayah, huda, guidance. But how to understand its meanings? You must take it from the Prophet and his holy progeny. Allah in Quran said, لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ The Prophet is the person who explains to the people, the meanings of Qur'an. No one can understand Qur'an on his own without referring and taking from the Prophet. If anyone says that, I know Arabic, and the Qur'an is in Arabic, I read Qur'an and understand whatever I understand. No, no. No one will understand Qur'an without getting the real meanings from the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his holy project. 
And say that that is probably one of the main reasons why we have non-Muslims or those who are anti-Islam, etc. Mm -hmm. Take ayahs of the Quran out of context. Of course, and, of course. And this is the biggest tragedy where we find, you know, propaganda yeah, against yeah, yeah, Muslims yeah. and Islam. And no one can claim that this verse means the linguistic meaning. No, Quran is not only language. No, Quran is a revelation which is conditional. Revelation, which is conditional, that it is not only language. It is the language which has got terminology. And the meaning of it is only from the Prophet. And those who gained the knowledge from the Prophet, who are his holy progeny, Ahlul Bayt. And Sayyidina, if we keep the Quran aside and... and, and put this statement with the famous book of Nahj al mm. Now, you know, you've, you've heard of this as well and many of our viewers that a German, either a philosopher or someone said mm. that mm. Th after reading Nahj al mm. that whoever's written this mm. was there when the creation was being created. Mm. A, a very famous mm. person. So, uh, the Nahj al in a sense, we, we, it's, it's really a reference book. Nahj al is one example of the knowledge of the real student mm -hmm. of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his holy progeny. Ali ibn Abi Talib, Amir al mumini mm -hmm. is the best student of the Prophet. Mm -hmm. Because he said, Allamani Rasulullah. The Prophet, the Messenger of Allah, taught me thousand gates of knowledge. Out of every gate, Thousands, thousand gates are open to me. So, the best student of the Prophet, his knowledge, not all his knowledge, small part of his knowledge, small part, is in Nahj al Balagha. Uh -huh. Nahj al Balagha is not all the sayings of Amir al Mu'mineen. No. Nahj al Balagha is a collection of Sharif al Radi. Whatever he collected, whatever he selected from the sayings, the sermons, the statements, the letters of Amir al Mu'mini. But it is a sample. Nahj al Balagha. And its greatness is a sample of the knowledge of the real student of the messenger of Islam. As the messenger of Islam was taught by Allah. Because Allah in Quran says, وَعَلَّمَكَ مَا لَمْ تَكُنْ تَعْلَمْ Allah taught you, O Prophet, Allah taught you whatever you did not know. So Nahj al mm -hmm. is a book of great meanings, deep meaning, which can never be resembled. No author on the earth has come. No author who could bring like Nahj al It is a miraculous mm -hmm. book. And only the scholars can know that, not the ignorance. The scholars can know that Nahj al in its knowledge, depth, is something which no human being can compile. No human being at all can compile. Thank you very much indeed. So, so the finally, with one final question, when we say that, you know, once the life hereafter starts and you get punished or rewarded for the deeds that you've committed, however, on the day of judgment when your deeds are being weighed, so if your bad deeds are put on the scale, will they include the bad deeds that you've gone through perjury, through barzik? It, I mean, so you're, you're being... Punished for mm. the bad deeds that you've done in this world, it starts when you, when you 
when you die, mm. during barzik. Mm. But then on the day of judgment, where your uh, when your deeds are weighed, mm. does that include the deeds, the bad deeds that you've already been punished more for? Allah's mercy is more than our expectation. The believers are saved from punishment in many ways. The lovers of Ahlul Bayt, if they did any mistake in this life, many of them are being purified through illness, through difficulties, through bad family life, through any hardship that they go from this life well purified. If something remains on them from their bad deeds, they might be punished while they are dying. <coughs> if something remains, then they will be punished in barzakh, in the grave. But when they come in the day of judgment, they come clear. Those who are lovers of Prophet and his holy progeny. But the bad people, the infidels, the hypocrites, the enemies of Allah, they get punishment from the moment of death till the day of judgment and in the day of judgment as well. May Allah save Allah. all of us from any sin. Allah. And may Allah grant all of us and all the lovers of Ahlul Bayt and all the believers grant us his great forgiveness Allah. and his great mercy. Allah. Keep on repeating Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah or Astaghfirullah wa as'aluhu tawbah in this month of Rajab 70 times every morning and every evening. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, thank you indeed, uh, Sayyidina. We have run out of time there. Viewers, uh, do join us, uh, inshallah, same time next week. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.